Hello, this is Dr. Reed Schufer from Alto Rancho Pet and Bird Hospital. This presentation is aimed at informing our clients and other pet owners about canine hyperadrenocorticism or Cushing syndrome, a problem that affects many older dogs. I hope that you find this presentation both useful and informative. Let's start by defining hyperadrenocorticism. Hyperadrenocorticism is a syndrome that occurs when there is too much cortisol in the blood. It was first discovered by Dr. Harvey Cushing in 1912. Thus, it is known as Cushing syndrome. In order to understand Cushing syndrome, you will need to know a bit about cortisol. Cortisol is one of the body's stress hormones. It helps us react to a variety of stresses. It is created in the adrenal glands, which are a pair of small glands located just above the kidneys. Adrenal glands are similar to peanut M&Ms, with an outer cortex, the chocolate part, and an inner medulla, the peanut. Cortisol is created in the cortex, or outer part of the gland. The medulla makes the variety of other important hormones. Cortisol performs many functions in the body. All of its functions are geared to maximize your chances of survival when experiencing stress. In response to stress, cortisol will increase the amount of sugar in the blood, which provides extra energy. This would be helpful if you had to run away from or fight a predator. It has anti-inflammatory properties, which are helpful if you are injured. It reduces the immune system response to injury and maintains blood pressure if you're hurt. Cortisol is an essential hormone and one cannot live without it. Although cortisol is required to live, too much of it has adverse effects on the body. Because cortisol works against insulin, it can cause the pet to become diabetic. Excess cortisol can cause muscle wasting, especially in the abdominal muscles, which lead to a pot-bellied appearance as you can see in the poodle. Cortisol in excess can raise the blood pressure, which can lead to strokes and heart failure. The depressing effects of cortisol on the immune system can lead to recurrent infections, especially in the skin and the urine. Cortisol has a deleterious effect on wound healing and can make successful surgery or healing from an injury difficult. By now you must be wondering how a dog gets Cushing's syndrome. To understand this disease, please bear with me as I discuss some basic physiology. Cortisol levels in the blood are under the control of the hypothalamus and the pituitary glands, which are small glands located in the base of the brain. The hypothalamus secretes a, a hormone called corticotropin releasing hormone, or CRH, in response to nervous input from the brain and body indicating stress. CRH tells the pituitary gland to release adrenocorticotrophic hormone, or ACTH, into the blood. ACTH then acts on the adrenal cortex and tells it to make and release more cortisol into the blood to help deal with the immediate stress. As cortisol levels rise, they are sensed in the hypothalamus, which then stops secreting CRH hormone. A simple way to think of this type of what we call feedback inhibition is to think of a toilet. When water is low in the tank, the valve opens and allows more water in. When the tank is full, the valve shuts off. With this basic understanding of cortisol metabolism, we can look at how Cushing's disease develops. The first and most common cause of Cushing's disease is due to small tumors developing in the pituitary gland. These tumors are generally small enough that they do not cause neurological symptoms. However, they secrete ACTH hormone continually, which in turn continues to stimulate the adrenal glands to make more cortisol. The second way to develop Cushing's disease is from tumors in the adrenal glands themselves. These tumors create and secrete cortisol without listening to the brain. Tumors of the adrenal gland can be very difficult to remove and they pose a bigger management challenge. Fortunately, only about 10 to 15% of pets with Cushing's disease have tumors in the adrenal glands, while 85% have pituitary-based disease. The last way a pet can develop Cushing syndrome is from chronic administration of cortisone or other steroid derivatives as medication. This can occur from oral forms of steroids, as well as topicals and injections with steroids in them. We call this iatrogenic Cushing's because it is caused by external factors. In many cases, removing the steroids will reverse the disease. However, steroids must always be stopped slowly 
because the body becomes dependent on them. The symptoms of Cushing's disease are classic. The most common problem we see is excessive thirst and urination caused by the steroids. The pot-bellied appearance and thinning or loss of fur are also commonly seen. Certain breeds will get blackheads in their skin as well. Cushing syndrome is an insidious disease which can lead to diabetes, high blood pressure, strokes, and recurrent infections. In most cases, it is best to treat the disease to avoid these complications. Diagnosing Cushing's disease begins with clinical symptoms. If we notice heavy thirst and urination, a pot-bellied appearance, and or thinning of the coat, we will generally recommend a general blood panel, which may point towards the possibility of Cushing's disease. If we see elevations of liver enzymes, particularly an enzyme called alkaline phosphatase on the chemistry profile, our suspicions will be raised. To make a definitive diagnosis, we generally choose from two tests, the low-dose dexamethasone suppression test or the ACTH stimulation test. The low-dose dexamethasone suppression test relies on the fact that normal dogs who receive dexamethasone, which is a relative of cortisol, will have depressed cortisol levels in the blood for eight or more hours. In contrast, cortisol levels in cushionoid dogs will tend to rise up before eight hours. This test takes eight hours to perform and the patient is dropped off early in the morning on an empty stomach. A blood sample is taken in the morning to determine the resting level of cortisol. Then a low dose of dexamethasone is administered by an injection. Two additional samples are taken at four and eight hours after the initial one and the pet is discharged in the late afternoon. Interpreting the low-dose dexamethasone suppression test is a little complicated. If the eight-hour sample rises above a certain level, then the dog most likely has Cushing syndrome. This level varies from lab to lab. If the eight-hour sample remains below that same level, the pet most likely does not have Cushing's disease. If the four-hour sample of cortisol level is less than half of the first sample, and the eight-hour sample is above the threshold we spoke above earlier, the dog probably has pituitary-based Cushing's disease instead of the, an adrenal tumor. This is one of the great advantages of the low-dose dexamethasone suppression test, because with a single test you can often determine whether the dog has Cushing's disease and whether it is either pituitary or adrenal tumor-based. The ACTH stimulation test relies on the stimulatory effects of ACTH hormone we mentioned earlier. Dogs with Cushing's disease will have an exaggerated response to the ACTH hormone. In this test, a fasting blood sample is taken to get the resting cortisol level. ACTH hormone is injected into the pet and a second sample is taken one to two hours later. If the second sample is above a certain level, the diagnosis of Cushing's disease can be made. Unfortunately, this test does not differentiate between pituitary and adrenal tumor-based Cushing's disease. In order to differentiate between adrenal tumors and pituitary tumors, we can either perform abdominal ultrasound or CAT scanning to see if there is an adrenal tumor, or we can perform the high-dose dexamethasone suppression test. This test is just like the low-dose version, except with a higher amount of dexamethasone. Normal dogs and those with pituitary-based tumors will stay suppressed for eight or more hours, but cortisone levels in dogs with adrenal tumors will rise above a certain threshold by eight hours. There are no perfect tests, and none of the tests we've mentioned will diagnose every pet every time. Both tests will generally give an accurate diagnosis in 85% of the time. This means if we get a negative test in a pet who has all of the classic symptoms of the disease, we may have to do multiple tests or more in-depth adrenal testing to make our diagnosis. Treatment for Cushing's disease can be very effective. In the case of adrenal-based disease, surgery will sometimes offer a cure. Unfortunately, these tumors are often inoperable. We use one of two drugs to treat Cushing's disease, trilostane and lysadrine. Once the therapy begins, pets are usually kept on the drugs for the remainder of their lives. Trilostane treats Cushing's disease by interfering with the production of cortisol in the adrenal gland. 
It is given one to two times daily. This drug must be monitored closely because it can have serious side effects if overdosed. If it is underdosed, we will not achieve our goals of therapy. Side effects from trilostane occur in 10 to 15 percent of the pets taking them. They're generally mild and include reduced appetite, vomiting, diarrhea, lethargy, or weakness. These side effects are most often managed with other drugs or dose adjustment. Lysogen treats Cushing's by selectively destroying the cortex of the adrenal gland where cortisol is made. Lysogen is given twice daily for the first five to 10 days, which we call the induction period. Once we have brought the cortisol levels down, we go to the maintenance phase where the drug is given one to two times weekly. Like trilostine, this drug must be monitored closely or severe side effects may occur. Side effects from lysodrin are very similar to those we see with trilostane. They include lethargy, weakness, reduced appetite, depression, vomiting, and diarrhea. Control of these symptoms may involve giving additional drugs and or changing the dose of the lysodrin. Treatment is aimed at reducing the clinical symptoms such as thirst, urination, skin problems, etc. We are also trying to reduce the incidence of diabetes, hypertension, and strokes. Symptoms of Cushing's didn't develop overnight, and it takes two to six months for them to improve with either therapy. In conclusion, Cushing's syndrome is a complex disease which affects many older dogs. Once diagnosed, most pets can live relatively normal lives with this disease, providing they receive proper treatment and monitoring. I'd like to thank you for your time. I hope that you found this presentation worthwhile. If you have further questions about Cushing syndrome or any other aspect of your pet's health care, please feel free to contact us at 909-980-3575.